Hey, I'm Chris Moniak. I'm the fixture installation planner here at Joann. Uh, we had a little issue at our Fairbanks, Alaska store where we do not have the proper end caps or fixtures in order to have our end caps for at the end of each end of our manufacturing runs. Um, so what we wanted to do here today was just put a, together a little small tutorial on how to build the end panels um, for this particular store so we don't have to ship new fixtures in from domestically from the United States all the way up to you guys. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a freestanding end cap. So what I have laid out here on the floor is all the parts that you actually have in your store. So I have 84 inch uprights. I have feet. Um, the ones I have here are actually the wrong size. You're going to be using 13s, but I have 16s here because that's all I have to play around with. I have a bottom rail, a top rail, two center rails, and a splicer rail, um, which you'll need. And then I have two different sizes of peg. Now for the sake of the, um, also I also have a closed base front or a toe kick and then a deck. Now for the sake of this um, tutorial, you guys are gonna be taking your 84 inch uprights and you're cutting them down. Uh, you've already received that direction. So for, in order to do this, you would have already had to cut these uprights down. I believe you're cutting them down to 60. And then with cutting down the uprights, you're going to be cutting down your two pegs. So these are the sizes that you actually have in your store. Um, and you're cutting the, both of these pegs down so we can make the right size end cap. So once you have everything cut down, uh, and for the sake of this conversation, that would have already been done. We're going to go ahead and build the freestanding end cap. Um, so I'm going to take my feet. I'm going to install them on the upright. Now this is possible to do this by yourself, but I highly recommend that you use a helper because this could easily fall down. So I'm gonna go ahead. My right man, right hand man here, he's gonna hold um, that upright while I get this one. He's gonna go ahead and he's gonna put the bottom rail in, which that's not the bottom rail. Make sure the tabs are fully put in into the notches, which he has. I'm going to go ahead and put a center rail here. Now you're going to go ahead and hold that for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert the pegboard that would have already been cut down to the right size. Now, once I have it at this point, um, excuse me, you guys do not have seismic anchors to anchor these to the floor. So once you're at this point where you have this backer panel on, um, for the sake of this video, you can pretend like this is one of your racks that you have sitting on your floor here, this column. I'm gonna go ahead and place this where it needs to go. Then you're gonna wanna go ahead and take some um, some three quarter inch screws and take your drill and go ahead and run some screws directly through this backer panel right into your manufacturing rack. Once you have that anchored, uh, and by the way, I would sink the screw in, but leave a little give to it. Don't pull it all the way in because you're still gonna have to get your splicer rail in. You don't wanna make it super tight. So then once you got that fastened to the manufacturing rack, you can go ahead and put the front panel in. You can go ahead and hold that upright again. Then you're going to install your splicer rail. Then you're going to take your second center rail. Install it halfway through this section. Then 
Then you're going to take your second um, panel and go ahead and install that. Now, mind you, I do not know what you guys have on site right now. For these back panels, it preferably would be Martech, um, you know, without the holes. Um, for the sake of uh, installing this, if you don't have the Martech, go ahead and use this pegboard. You're not going to see it anyways. The manufacturing racks are going to cover it up. Then, once you have this backer panel on, before you put the front panel on, go ahead and take your drill and a few more screws and put, um, in total, you should probably have about six to eight screws running through this backer panel into your manufacturing racks to make sure this is secure. One thing I didn't mention when um, before you start fastening into the panels, you're gonna wanna do some fine adjustments to the leveling legs on the base brackets on the uprights. Um, to make sure that this is sitting level um, Not just uh, level this way, but plumb to the manufacturing racks before you start fastening them up there Once it's all anchored you go ahead and put the last panel in My top rail I got here is a little bent up, um, but then your finale for the gondola portion is going to be inserting the top rail on the top. I'm going to go ahead and skip that because I'm a little short. You're going to put your toe kick on, then your shoe trims, which I do not have with me right now, but there's a trim that goes on there and on the outside of here, and then Last but not least, you're going to go ahead and slide your deck on. Now we're looking for 13 inch decks on the end here. Uh, we believe that you have these on site, but if for any reason that you do not have the 13 inch, you can go ahead and use the 16 inch for the end caps. Um, and that's just about it. Um, the only other thing I don't have for this video, um, just because I don't have them here where I'm doing this video, is the end trim that would trim out the side of the upright, so upright end trim. So you'd want to put that on this side and then on this side. And then that's it.